Hello, welcome to our discussion for today, which are the kinds of transactions. Previously, we have discussed yung mga transactions na subject to VAT in which nag-apply tayo ng 12%. However, the world of VAT is a wonderful collection of different kinds of transactions which we will dwell dito sa discussion na to at sa mga susunod. So generally, these are the three types of transactions with regards to VAT. Una, there is the taxable, second exempt, and the third is zero rated. Yung taxable, okay na tayo dito. Ito yung nilagyan natin ng 12% dun sa mga previous discussions. For this discussion, puntahan natin itong VAT exempt transactions and susunod dun would be the zero rated ones. Kung maalala mo yung unang discussion natin para sa VAT, in-explain natin, okay, kung paano ba gumagana yung VAT. Yan. So, na dyan ulit si A, B, C, or D. Now, si A, magbebenta siya kay B. Si B, magbabayad siya kay A, di ba, ng input niya. So, may value dito. Yan, may value. Now, si B, kung ibebenta niya yun, magpapatong siya. Okay? Nang value, ng VAT doon na magagaling kay C. Diba? And then si C, kung ipapasa niya rin yun, magpapatong ulit siya. Ayan, na magagaling kay D. Sabi nga natin, VAT is an indirect tax. No? So, itong pinasa ni B, na-recover niya rin dito. Si C naman, ito yung binayad niya, na-recover niya kay D. So, nagkakaskid, no? nagpapasa-pasa yung VAT from one to another. Ngayon, may isip natin, di ba, na nagpapasa-pasa and nare-recover ng ilang entities or ilang individuals dahil sila ay VAT registered, dahil sila ay businesses. Pero at the end, kung si D ang end user, okay, si D ang end user, or consumer lahat ng ito technically, shinolder ni D siya yung nag-cover so sa lulagi ng end user or consumer kung iisipin natin, talagang mabigat ang VAT, lalo na sa mga pangkaraniwang mamamayan na hindi naman malaki yung budget para sa mga gastusin and with this regard, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga tinatawag na VAT exempt transactions Now, ano nga ba muna yung ibig sabihin ng exempt transactions? So, itong ibig sabihin niya, no output tax on sale and no input tax on purchases. Bali, hindi tayo magre-record ng input, hindi tayo magre-record ng output. Wala tayong babayaran na input at wala tayong marireceive na output VAT. Ibig sabihin, for these certain types of transactions, walang ipinapatong na buwis doon sa transfer ng sale of goods or services. Now, let me read yung specific transactions na exempt sa VAT. If you can remember, all blessed GS in the course of trade or business is subject to VAT except 109. Except 109 as amended. And yung 109 as amended, ito yun. Ito yung babasahin natin kasi yung under 109 as amended, yun yung exhaustive list ng mga transactions na hindi subject to VAT. Magsimula tayo dito sa kaunahan. Sale or importation of agricultural and marine food products in their original state, livestock and poultry of a kind generally used as or yielding or producing foods for human consumption and breeding stock and genetic materials therefore. Products under this paragraph shall be considered in their original state even if they have undergone the simple processes of preparation or preservation for the market such as freezing, drying, salting, broiling, roasting, smoking, or stripping, polished and or husk rice, corn grits, rocaine and sugar and molasses, ordinary salt and copra shall be considered in their original state. We have two keywords dito sa exempt transaction na ito. Okay? One is this, food products. And the second is, original state. Kung tatagalugin natin itong exempt transaction na ito, 
Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, lahat ng agricultural and marine food products na nasa kanilang original state or do nag-undergan man ng kahit anong process as long as simple would not be subject to fat. And those simple processes na consider natin na kahit nag-undergo na sa processes na yon, yung mga agricultural and marine food products na yon ay ito, freezing, drying, salting, broiling, roasting, smoking or stripping. Now, pumunta ka sa supermarket. Okay, pumunta ka sa supermarket, pumunta ka doon sa meat section. Pagka bumili ka ng karne doon, ng baboy o karne ng manok, at titignan mo yung resibo mo, maikita mo na yung mga products na yon nakalagay doon sa VAT exempt. Bakit? Kasi yung mga products na yon ay under netong classification na ito. Now, bakit nga ba naging exempt yung mga uh, products na ganon? It is a way of protecting the consumers. As you can see, halimbawa, pupunta ka sa wet market, bibili ka ng isda, bibili ka ng manok, or bibili ka ng karneng baboy or baka. Hindi na deemed na lagyan pa ng vat yun kasi normally, directly naman yun sa mga consumers. ba? Diba? Except dun sa mga ginagawang negosyo yun, right? So, para mapagaan yung buhay ng mga mamamayan, yung mga simpleng produkto na yon, simpleng food products na yon, again, food products na yon, na staple, okay, na deem na pangangailangan ng mga tao sa kanilang pamumuhay, ay hindi na dapat lagyan pa ng VAT. Kaya ito ay ginawang exempt transaction. Now, let's just be uh, aware and careful sa pag identify noong mga food products na yon na would be considered as in their original state. <clears throat> Dahil sabi nga natin, itong mga processes na to, okay, itong mga processes na to, deemed acceptable pa sila in their original state. And beyond these processes, hindi na sila consider as in their original state. Therefore, magiging subject na sila sa sifat. For example, daing. ba diba? Daing. So, yung bangus, daing na bangus, ano yun, hatiin, lilinisin, simple lang yun, nilinis. And then, pinatuyo. Kasi daing yun eh. So, papasok yun sa drying, is lalagyan ng salt. No? In that case, it is already, or it is still in its original state. Kaya, yung sale non would be considered as an exempt transaction. As well as yung mga karneng manok na makikita natin sa groceries, no? na finriz lang, na wala namang ibang ginawa, except yung sa nilinis, eh, makukonsider pa rin as original state and therefore exempt nga. Now, please take note ito. Kung maaalala mo, dun sa previous discussions natin, may sinabi tayo ng mga services na hindi subject to, but, iyon yun yung sa corn mills, di ba? Yung sa uh, rice mills, if you can remember, no? So, tatlo yun. And sabi nga natin, except dun, subject to VAT. And yun kasi, kaya nga sinasabi natin na hindi siya subject to VAT dahil yung palay, okay, tinanggal lang yung husk. Okay, tapos yung mais, tinanggal lang siya dun sa cob, sa corn cob. Ibig sabihin, it is a food product na nag-undergo na simple process. Nilinis lang. Kaya magpo-fall yun under this category na exempt transaction. Now, magbibigay pa tayo ng isang example dito. Okay. Halimbawa itong raw cane sugar. Raw cane, no? So, tubo. Yung tubo. Okay. Yung tubo, gagawing asukal yan. Ginagawang asukal yan, di ba? So, brown sugar muna yan. Or muscovado. Okay. Vado. And then, yung muscovado, ginagawa yung white sugar. Okay. So, yung white sugar, mas mahal yan kesa dun sa brown sugar pero ganito kasi yan yung tubo, its conversion to brown sugar will undergo simple process only ibig sabihin, kapag ka nagbenta ka ng brown sugar this is patexem o yung muscovado 
Now, yung brown sugar, pag kinonvert mo sa white sugar, hindi na siya consider as a simple process. Therefore, yung white sugar, kaya siya mas mahal kasi pag binenta, subject to vat na yan. Basta lagi mong tatandaan na sa unang kategory na to, yung mga food products, okay, agricultural and marine food products in their original state ay exempt sa vat. Second, sale or importation of fertilizers. Seeds, seedlings, and fingerlings, fish, prawn, livestock, and poultry feeds including ingredients, whether locally produced or imported, used in the manufacture of finished feeds, except specialty feeds for race horses, fighting cocks, aquarium, fish, zoo animals, and other gen animals generally considered as pets. Now, we can consider this transaction, okay, this but exempt transaction, as similar dun sa nauna. Kasi, yung sa nauna, halimbawa, nagbenta ka ng manok. So, sabi, but exempt yun, hindi ka magre-record ng output but. Now, yung manok na yun, syempre, may panggagalingan yun. ba diba? May panggagalingan, bibili ka ng CCO. So, yung CCO na yun, alam nga naman, lagyan mo pa rin ng but yun, may input ka. Ibig sabihin, yung sale mo, exempt, wala kang output. Pero, nung bumili ka ng CCO, may input ka. So, parang tagilig tayo doon. And at the same time, halimbawa, nagbenta ka ng palay, exempt yun. Pero yung palay, syempre, bibili ka ng mga pananim nun. ba diba? Bibili ka ng mga pananim. So, kung yung mga pananim na yun, meron kang input sa pagbili. Tapos, yung bibenta mo, walang output. So, mm, tagilid pa rin. No? Kaya, meron neto. No? So, ang ibig sabihin lang neto, yung mga product dun sa nauna okay, yung mga pinanggalingan nun mga pinanggalingang produkto nun ay hindi na rin subject to VAT para both sa pagbili and sa pagbenta pareho silang VAT exempt at ito nga yun, no fertilizers, seeds, seedlings, and fingerlings fish, prawn, livestock, and poultry feeds Okay, yan, kasama na rin dito yung mga poultry feeds including ingredients whether locally produced or imported used in the manufacture of finished feeds. Pero may exception tayo dito. Ito, yung exception natin is for agricultural purposes. Okay, for agricultural. Kasi itong mga produkto na ito, subsequently, ibibenta natin sa mga end users or sa mga consumers. In which case, Okay, ito, yung mga exception is not for agricultural use. Kasi, ito, race, horses, fighting cocks, aquarium fish, zoo animals. So, leisure na to eh. Leisure and entertainment na to. So, though meron tayong exception, okay, but exemption sa mga ito, okay, sa mga uh, poultry feeds, eh, Hanggang dun lang yon sa purpose agriculturally at hindi yun na-extend doon sa mga leisure and entertainment purposes. Pangatlo, importation of personal and household effects belonging to the residents of the Philippines returning from abroad and non-resident citizens coming to resettle in the Philippines provided that such goods are exempt from customs duties under the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, okay, kapag ka, ikaw ay OFW, nagbalik ka sa Pilipinas, or dati kang naninirahan na sa ibang bansa, pero ikaw ay citizen pa rin ng Pilipinas. Yung mga gamit na dadalin mo, household and personal effects, no? household and personal effects na dadalhin mo balik, pabalik ng Pilipinas would not be subject to VAT. Kasi sabi nga natin, di ba, sa unang discussion, uh, exemption dun sa all blessed GS ay importation. Di ba? So, generally, lahat na importation. Pero ito, this kind of importation is VAT exempt. Pero may criteria pa rin dito. Ito, provided that such goods are exempt from customs duties under the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. So, dapat muna, exempt yung mga personal and household effects na yon from customs duties. Okay, bago siya maging VAT exempt. 
Sir, paano sa exam? Nagbigay ng ganitong item malimbawa. Ay, nagbigay ng ganyang item. Tapos hindi ito sinabi. So, anong ibig sabihin nun, sir? Anong gagawin namin? Ito kasi, with regards to BIR. Ito kasi, with regards to customs. Tandaan natin na ang inaaral naman natin is with regards to BIR and not with regards to customs. No? So, hindi tayo ina-expect na magiging expert dito sa bagay nito. Kung hindi ito given, assume na natin na okay na to. Okay? Kapag hindi ito given, assume na natin na okay to. So, ito na lang maging criteria natin. Next, another kind of importation. Importation of professional instruments and implements, tools of trade, occupation or employment, wearing apparel, domestic animals, and personal and household effects belonging to persons coming to settle in the Philippines, or Filipinos or their families and descendants who are now residents or citizens of other countries. Such parties herein after referred to as overseas Filipinos in quantities and of the class suitable to the profession, rank or position of the persons importing said items for their own use and not for barter or sale, accompanying such persons or within are arriving within a reasonable time, provided that the vehicles, vessels, aircrafts, machineries, and other similar goods for use in manufacture shall not fall within this classification and shall therefore be subject to duties, taxes, and other charges. Similar lang rin doon sa bago ito. However, mas dinetalye. So, professional instruments and implements. Okay? Tools of trade. Ano ibig sabihin ng tools of, tools of trade? Halimbawa, ikaw ay karpintero. So, ang tools of trade mo ay martilyo. Occupation or employment. Many relations occupation or employment. Wearing or apparel. Domestic animals and personal and household effects. Okay? Na mga magsisettle sa Pilipinas. Coming to settle in the Philippines. Nakalagay or. So, ibig sabihin yung coming to settle in the Philippines, hindi lang limited sa mga Pilipino. Yung mga Pilipino daw, oh, at ang kanilang pamilya, na ngayon ay nakatira na sa ibang bansa. Okay? And, dapat itong mga items na to, ay in quantities, okay? in quantities na suitable sa kanilang profession, rank, or position kung sino man yung nag import na yon and dapat yung mga items na yon since ang sabi niya dito personal and household effects personal and household effects is not okay, hindi siya pang barter or sale and dapat, okay, yung mga items na ito ay dala okay dala nung taong pupunta sa Pilipinas accompanying such persons kasama niya sa biyahe niya or darating pa lang after a reasonable time okay darating pa lang within a reasonable time pagka uwi niya however kapag ka daw mga sasakyan okay ito vehicles, vessels, aircrafts machineries and other similar goods okay hindi daw siya kasama dito, shall not fall within this classification. Therefore, itong provided na to, itong mga ito, hindi siya but exempt. Dahil ito lang. Okay? Ito lang. Yan. So, tatandaan na personal and household effects doon sa mga magsesettle sa Pilipinas, Pilipino man or hindi. And dapat itong mga items na to, okay, ay reasonable doon sa gamit niya reasonable dun sa gagamitin lamang tung nagdala and dapat itong mga items na ito okay, hindi pang benta and darating sa Pilipinas either kasabay niya or will arrive within a reasonable time next services subject to percentage taxes so ayun nga sasabihin ko na sa'yo kung bakit ba may VAT meron pang OPT sabi natin, yung VAT and OPT ay buwis doon sa mga transfers ng businesses. Kaya siya tinatawag na transfer tax. Now, lagi nating tandaan. Ang sabi natin, 1, 2, 3, 3 million yung VAT threshold. So, kung itong 3 million, uh, above that, sabi siya sa VAT. 
Okay. Now, ito sabi natin yung bat is a general rule. Why? Kasi sabi, above 3 million. So, above 3 million. As long as above 3 million. Walang limitasyon. Hanggang kaya na magawa ng sale. Basta above 3 million would be subject to but no subject to but now anong mas definite okay 3 mil above 3 million okay above 3 million yeah, above 3 million threshold natin sa but or yung 0 to 3 million mas definite no yung 0 to 3 million kasi enclosed siya okay kasi yung sa 3 mil above 3 million sky is the limit yun ito lim limited siya 0 to 3 million kaya yung 0 to 3 million na yun okay papasok dun yung percentage tax okay pero beware meron tayong limit hindi 0 to 3 million ang subject sa PT kasi meron tayong isang maliit na hurdle dito which is 100,000 so kapag above 100,000 to 3 million that is subject to percentage tax pagka naman beyond 3 million it is subject to bat now sabi ko sa iyo di ba etong bat sky is the limit to kaya siya tinawag na general rule and na exemption etong PT dahil enclosed the enclosed siya more than 100,000 to 3 million subject to PT now sir kumpleto na halos eh pero meron ito 0 to 100,000 so, anong transfer tax nyan, sir? Yan. So, ito, 0 to 100,000. This is not subject to transfer taxes. Taxes, yan. Sir, bakit hindi subject to transfer tax yung 0 to 100,000? Lagi mong tatandaan na ito, yung threshold nya, at ang threshold nito, ay base dito, right? Base dito. So, kung magkano yung amount. And this amount is for 12 months. 12 months. Okay, sa isang taon. Now, ito, kung ganun yung magiging scenario, this is subject also to 12 month period. Now, isipin mo, meron ka na nga sale na sa loob ng isang taon, 1 hanggang 100,000. Lalagay mo pa ba, ba ng buwis yun? Hindi na. Dahil sobrang liit na nun. Grabe naman kung bubuwisan mo pa yun. 100,000 na nga lang yung benta sa isang taon. 100,000 divided by 12 mo. So, maliit yun kada buwan. So, as humanitarian reason, wala na pong transfer taxes yung 0 to 100,000. Kasi, kung pagbabasihan lang rin yung batas, yung amount na yan, hindi na po siya consider as ano, business though, ina-earn mo yan para sa business mo, nagbi-business ka yung kinikita mo is a, win, is a means of livelihood na lang para buhayin yung sarili mo hindi para kumita at para lumago yung negosyo kasi kung ganyan lang rin kaliit yung iyong kikitain tandaan mo, na itong 3 million na ito 100,000 na ito ayan po ay sales, benta hindi po yan income dahil we're, talk, we're talking about transfer taxes no? So, isipin mo, may benta ka na isang daang libo sa loob ng isang taon. Lalagyan pong buwis yun, transfer tax yun. Eh, ang problema, sabi nga natin, benta yan, hindi yan income. So, yung 100,000 na sales mo, babawasan pa ng cost of goods all man. So, wala nang matitira sa tao. Kaya, lagi nating tatandaan, okay, na kapag ka ang sale, okay, GSP or GR mo is 0 to 100,000, hindi po siya subject sa kahit anong transfer taxes dahil it is a means of livelihood na hindi lang pang negosyo kasi sobrang liit na niyan now pagka more than 100,000 to 3 million ayan yung magiging subject to percentage tax at beyond 3 million yung magiging subject to VAT kaya sabi natin all okay all transactions which are subject to percentage tax is not anymore subject to VAT Okay. Next, services by agricultural contract growers and milling for others of palay into rice, corn into corn grits, and sugar cane into 
raw sugar. So, ayan, binalikan natin. Ayan yung tatlong exemption dun sa previous discussions natin. Sp expressly stated na, no? Yung services daw para sa iba na pag-convert ng palay into rice, corn into corn grits, and sugar cane into raw sugar. Raw sugar is muscovado or brown sugar, ha? Is a bad exam transaction. Next, medical, dental, hospital, and veterinary services except those rendered by professionals. Next, educational services rendered by private educational institutions duly accredited by the Department of Education, DepEd, the Commission on Higher Education, CHED, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, TESDA, and those rendered by government educational institutions. So, tignan natin yung tuition fee natin, no? Tignan natin kung may bat. Wala pong bat yun. Next, services rendered by individuals pursuant to an employer-employee relationship. Ayan. So, kapag ikaw ay isang empleyado, Okay, hindi ka maniningil ng VAT or hindi ka magbabayad ng VAT dahil VAT exempt po yun. Services rendered by regional or area headquarters established in the Philippines by multinational corporations which act as supervisory, communications, and coordinating centers for their affiliates, subsidiaries, or branches in the Asia-Pacific region and do not earn or derive income from the Philippines. Ang keyword po natin dito is ito, area headquarters. Dahil ang ibig sabihin ng area headquarters do not earn or derive income from the Philippines. Now, the moment na yung salitang area okay, ay maging operating headquarters, yan. So, hindi na po siya pasok sa exemption na to. Dahil pag sinabi natin operating headquarters okay, nag-earn na siya or nagde-derive na siya ng income sa Philippines. Next, transactions which are exempt under international agreements to which the Philippines is a signatory or under special laws except those under Presidential Decree Number no. 529 or the Petroleum Act of 1949. Ayan, so special laws na nagsasabi na may mga transaction with other nations na hindi subject to VAT. Susunod, Sales by agricultural cooperatives duly registered with the CDA or Cooperative Development Authority to their members as well as sale of their produce, whether in its original state or processed form, to non-members, their, impor their importation of direct farm inputs, machineries, and equipment, including spare parts thereof, to be used directly or and exclusively in the production and or processing of their produce. Masarap maging member ng isang kooperatiba. Okay. Uh, Mapag-aaralan yan at some point dahil kasama sa pinag-aaralan na ngayon sa accounting ay yung batas tungkol sa mga kooperatiba. And isa nga sa mga benefits na yon ay ito. No? So, yung kanilang ano, sales sa kanilang members. Okay. So, hindi daw siya subject to but And ang maganda dito, whether in its original state or process no so when it comes doon sa mga cooperatives hindi mag apply yung VAT exemption na para lang sa mga original state kahit na non members pa yon and then ito pa isa pang benefit dito so yung kanilang mga gagamiting equipments mga cooperative na yun if ag agricultural cooperative ay hindi magiging subject to VAT Yan. So, on a separate discussion, siguro pwede nating matakil to or kung hindi naman, may encounter mo pa rin to dahil hindi lang yan yung benefits ng pagkakaroon or pagiging member ng isang kooperatiba. Next, gross receipts from lending activities by credit or multipurpose cooperatives duly registered with the CDA. Yan, cooperative na naman. Sales by non-agricultural non-electric and non-credit cooperatives duly registered with the CDA provided that a share capital contribution of each member does not exceed 15,000 pesos and regardless of the aggregate capital and net surplus rateably distributed among the members. 
Next, export sales by persons who are not but registered. Okay. Paitandaan mo tong export sales na yan. Dahil that would be significant on our next discussion. Next, sale of real properties. Una, para daw ang real property ay hindi subject to VAT. Real property not primarily held for sale or held for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business. However, if the same is used in the trade or business of the seller, it is subject to VAT being a transaction incidental to the taxpayer's business. Ano nga ibig sabihin nito? Sabi natin, all bless GS in the course of trade or business. So, naulit lang yun dito. Sabi dito, kapag ka daw yung real property, okay, yung isang real property, ay hindi naman talaga binebenta or hindi naman pine pinaparentahan ng isang tao or ng isang entity. Okay? Tapos yun ay nabenta, hindi siya subject to what? So, hindi talaga siya binebenta or hindi talaga siya pinaparentahan pero kinailang ibenta, hindi siya subject to VAT. Pero, ang kategory natin dun is hindi binebenta talaga or hindi pinaparentahan. However, kapag yung property na yun, yung real property na yun, ay ginagamit doon sa business kahit na hindi mo talaga siya binebenta or hindi mo siya pinaparentahan rather pwede mo siyang sabihin na ginagamit mo sa business mo as your warehouse ba? Diba? kasi incidental yon doon sa negosyo sa conduct ng business and in that case kahit na hindi siya pinaparentahan kahit na hindi talaga siya for sale yung pagbebenta nun would still be subject to VAT next Sale of real properties utilized for low-cost housing with a price ceiling of 750,000 pesos. So, let's define low-cost housing. Okay, low-cost housing refers to housing projects intended for homeless, low-income family beneficiaries undertaken by the government or private developers which may either be a subdivision or a condominium registered and licensed by the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board or HLURB under Batas Pambansa bilang 220 Presidential Decree Number no. 957 or any other similar law wherein the unit selling price is within the selling price per unit as set by the Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council HUDCC pursuant to RA number no. 7279 and other special laws Bali yan po yung definition natin ng low-cost housing. And sabi nga dito, wherein the unit selling price is within this unit per unit uh, set by HUDCC. And yung limit na nga na yun, okay, yung ceiling na yun is 750,000. Therefore, lahat po ng sale ng low-cost housing na within 750,000 would be VAT exempt. Basta tandaan natin na may threshold yun na 750,000. And beyond that, kahit na sabi mo low cost housing ba siya, eh subject to but na siya. Next, sale of real properties utilized for socialized housing wherein the price ceiling per unit is 450,000. Yan, so kanina low cost housing, okay? Low cost housing 750. Now this is socialized housing and ang uh, ceiling is 450,000. Mas mababa pa sa low cost. So define natin yung socialized housing. housing. Socialized housing refers to housing programs and projects covering houses and lots or home lots only undertaken by the government or the private sector for the underprivileged and homeless citizen which shall include sites and services development, long-term financing, liberated terms on interest payments and such other benefits. Socialized housing shall also refer to projects intended for the underprivileged and homeless wherein the housing package selling price is within the lowest interest rates under the Unified Home Lending Program, UHLP, or any equivalent housing program of the government, the private sector, or non-government organizations. Kung yung low-cost housing kanina para dun sa mga low-income families, eto, 
socialized housing para dun sa mas may hirap pa sa mga underprivileged na walang tahanan okay so yung mga binebentang properties na could be considered as socialized housing as long as they are within the ceiling which is right now set as 450,000 is bad exempt next sale of residential lot valued at 1.5 million pesos and below or house and lot and other residential dwellings valued at 2.5 million and below baka iniisip mo ang iniisip lang ng gobyerno yung mga low income families and yung mga underprivileged talaga though they all deserve that kasi mahirap nga naman ang buhay talaga no, pero binibigyan din ng benepisyo na bad exemption ng gobyerno ng batas yung ibang mas may kaya na mga pamilya na kaya bumili ng mas magandang bahay and eto nga po yun yung mga residential lots daw okay, valued at 1.5 million and below ay hindi subject to but, but exempt now residential lot lote lang, lupa lang 1.5 million now kapag ka naman daw house and lot no bahay at lupa and other residential dwellings other residential dwellings sasama na dyan yung mga condo valued at 2.5 and below okay so hindi pa rin siya subject to but now you may have been wondering meron tayong tatlong properties na sinabi excluding yung residential at meron tayong sinabi na low cost housing meron tayong socialized housing at meron tayong itong others no itong house and lot and others and others 2.5 no yung kanyang ceiling tapos meron tayong low cost at meron tayong socialized ito ay 450k and this is 750k papaisip ka eh bakit yung low cost at socialized housing ba hindi siya house and lot house and lot din naman yun di ba bahay at lupa din yung low cost and socialized housing pero bakit meron pa siyang specific na threshold e regardless house and lot din naman yun pasok siya sa 2.5 million pesos so ganito po kasi yan it is with regards doon sa categorization ng property dahil nga itong socialized ay para sa underprivileged and yung low cost para doon sa low income earners kaya nagkaroon pa sila ng separate thresholds now kung susumahin mo yung bumibili ng socialized siguro ah, sobrang layo na ma-achieve nila yung 2.5 million diba, parang medyo suntok sa buwan sad but true no? and kung kakayanin nila yon they would not be considered as underprivileged di ba? hindi sila oh, paano ka mga ka-afford ng 2.5 million na bahay na sasabihin mo underprivileged ka so parang misleading naman yon ba diba? and same dun sa mga low cost housing owners no so ikaw i low income low income ka sa ngayon 750,000 kung makakabili ka ng 2.5 million pesos worth na house and lot so ilan yon 2 million 500,000 so mahigit tatlo mahigit 3 times nito yung halaga ng bahay na bibili mo makakabili ka ng tatlong low cost housing If you are a low income family, no? So tama ba na makakabili ka ng tatlong beses doon sa usual lang na kayang i-afford ng mga katulad mo, quote in quote, katulad mo na low income earners? Hindi rin, no? So magiging misleading na 'yon. Meron meron tayong specific thresholds to categorize yung mga tao. Okay? Para malaman niyo kung hanggang saan ba yung kanila talagang i-afford. Bakit? Dahil kapag ka tinanggal mo itong 750, tinanggal mo itong 450, sasabihin nung isang tao kahit na mayaman siya, pwede siyang maging underprivileged. Or kahit kung yung mayaman, nakaka-afford nito, sabihin niya, low income lang siya. Although, hindi yun sa pagiging humble, rather, sa pandaraya na yun. So, gusto nilang maka-afford or makuha yung benefits na binibigay ng gobyerno doon sa mga 
underprivileged. So, pandaraya na yun. Kaya meron tayong tatlong threshold para ma-specify natin yung kategorya ng tao base sa kanilang kita at maibigay sa kanila yung karapat dapat na benepisyo, lalong-lalo na kung sila ay mahihirap. Now, tandaan natin. Ito yung tatandaan mo. If two or more adjacent residential lots or house and lots are sold or disposed in favor of one buyer for the purpose of utilizing the lots as one residential dwelling, the sale shall be exempt from VAT only if the aggregate value of the lots are within the threshold. So, lagyan natin ang halimbawa. Halimbawa ako. Okay? Halimbawa ako. Naisip ko bumili ng kondo. One bedroom unit. One bedroom lang, naliitan ako. Pero sabi ko, ito lang yung bibilin ko kasi pagka sumobra ng 2.5 million, may VAT na ako. Ito nasa 2.4 lang. Sabi natin 2.4. VAT exempt yun. Right? Kasi house in Latin other residential dwellings, 2.5 yung threshold. At pag binili ko ito, 2.4, walang ano, walang VAT. Now, yung 2 yung two bedroom kasi nasa 3 million. So, yung 3 million na yun, patungo mo pa ng VAT, 360,000. Madadagdagan ng 360,000. E eh, matalino ako. Sabi ko, kung 2.4 yung isa, wala siyang VAT, ay, bibiling ko yung kabila. 2.4 din yun. So, ang total nun is 4.8. Pero, wala akong binayarang VAT. Kasi, within the threshold naman per unit. Tapos, lalagyan ko na lang ng butas sa gitna. Lagyan ko ng pintuan sa gitna yung dalawang unit para iisa lang. Now, dun ka nagkakamali. Dahil ang sabi ng batas, kapag ka bumili ka ng dalawang, okay, dalawang magkatabi na lote or house and lot at balak mong gawing isa lang yon para yun nga makatakas ka sa pagbabayad ng tamang VAT, hindi po pwede yun hindi magiging exempt yun. Magiging exempt lang siya kapag pig, pag pinagsama mo yung dalawang property na yon at still yung amount nila ay within the threshold, exempt pa rin sila. Pero dun sa kaso na sinabi ko, 2.4 plus 2.4, 4.8, akala ko ba't exempt siya, mali ako. Kasi yung 4.8 na yun, papatungan na ng 12%. May 576,000 na, ba't na ako? Na kung bumili ako ng 2 bedroom, sabi nga natin, 3 million lang. E di 360,000 na lang yung VAT. Okay, sa so lagi nating tatandaan to. Okay, pagka bumili ka ng two or more adjacent lots na pagsasamahin mo sa isa, yung combined, okay, combined value no yung magiging basis para doon sa VAT threshold, hindi yung individual unit. Now, sabi nga natin kanina sa simula ng discussion, VAT is a very wonderful and complex body of knowledge kaya yung sinabi ko kanina ano yon hanggang December 31, 2020 yon okay pasensya na ako na overload ka no? pasensya na ako nabibigla ka pero ganun talaga dahil beginning January 1, 2021 yung VAT exemption doon sa mga real properties ay mag apply na lang sa tatlong ito only apply to 1. Sale of real properties not primarily held for sale to customers or held for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business. Yan, malinaw na malinaw. Not primarily held for sale to customers or held for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business. Kabag ka daw hindi siya primarily for sale or pangrenta in the ordinary course of trade or business, hindi siya subject to VAT. VAT exempt siya. Okay tayo dyan. Pangalawa, sale of real property utilized for socialized housing as defined by RA 7279. Ayan, socialized housing. And pangatlo, sale of house and lot and other residential dwellings with selling price of not more than, than letter A, not more than 2 million pesos. So yan, medyo na problema tayo. Diba? Itong house and lot na to, and other residential dwellings, kanina 2.5 million, ngayon 2 million na lang. Actually, kung medyo aware ka sa balita last year, uh, siguro mga October, November, in-raise in in na to ng mga property developers 
and some other senators no? na sana suspendihin ito itong itong provision na ito ng train law kasi this is under the train law you know? so since yung train law nga nagsimula siya ng January 1, 2018 wala pang pandemya noon and ito nag start ito magte take effect to may pandemic and yun nga maraming tao yun na wala ng trabaho na apektuhan yung trabaho o lumiit yung kita and ang gusto ang goal kasi natin para magkaroon ka ng VAT exemption ay eh, para mas mailapit mo sa tao yung mga produkto or serbisyo na kailangan nila and kaya ka nagbigay ng VAT exemption sa certain or specific properties kasi gusto mo silang magkaroon ng sarili nilang bahay now itong 2 million na to bunga ba siya? kasi dati siyang 500 uh, dati siyang 2.5 million bumaba ng 500,000 now dahil nagkaroon nga ng pandemic maraming nawala ng trabaho kung dati yung 2.4 mo walang bat diba? wala yung bat ngayon 2021 starting January 1 2021 dagdagan mo lang yung 2.4 mo madadagdagan na 288,000 so masyadong mabigat yun so mapapansin natin na itong 2 million is hindi siya masyadong maka ano makamasa dahil imbis na taasan yung exemption bumaba pa another observation din natin dito is wala nang sinasabing low cost housing so sinasabi natin kanina nagkaroon ng categorization sa socialized and low cost housing dahil gusto natin specify sila diba i-categorize sila na ibibi- para maibigay yung tamang benepisyo para sa kanila now yung socialized housing na lang yung natitira dahil yung low cost housing is hindi na nasabi now let me be honest with you since hindi siya nasabi and sabi apply to only apply itong tatlong ito it could be reasonably understood na yung low cost housing is pumasok na dito no? so hindi na siya separate category rather incorporated na dito sa number 3 So ito po yung summary, no? Ito po yung summary ng pagbabago. Ito yung una natin din discuss, train law 2018 to 2020, no? So yung house and lot sabi natin 1.5 million. House and lot 2.5 million. Socialized housing 450, low cost housing 750. And starting 2021, okay, under pa rin ng train law, pero deferred lang since 2018 yung mga house, yung mga lote, okay, lots batabol regardless of amount isa pa to di ba nakaka medyo makakalungkot yan medyo mahirap dahil dati kung bumili ka ng lote sabihin natin 500,000 lang yun lang yung kaya mo malaki na rin siguro yun depende sa lugar ngayon meron kang gagastusin na 60,000 on top of it and kung meron yung 1.5 million dati walang bat yan ngayon dadagdag ka na ng 180,000 na so Starting 2021, lahat po ng lote na ibibenta ay batable regardless of amount. Next, yung house and lot, yun nga, from 2.5 million to 2 million. So, very hindi makamasa. No? Yung socialized housing, wala naman sinabing pagbabago. Kasi ang sabi nga natin sa socialized housing, it is defined by yung HLURB nga ba or HADCZ. Basta yon so i-define siya ng specific government agencies na nakaatas para doon. So, magbabago ito pagka sinabi nila na magbabago yan. Okay? And itong low-cost housing, di ba, since wala na siya, hindi na siya expressly stated, so, it is reasonably safe to assume na this is already incorporated here. Dito sa house and lot na 2 million pesos. So, pwede na rin palang isipin. Ano? Dati, yung low-cost housing, 750,000. Ngayon, if you want to categorize a low-cost housing ka 1.5 million, pwede. Kasi, or hanggang 2 million, kasi wala na siyang specific threshold. And 2 million na lang mapupunta dun sa general threshold ng house and lot. Anyways, punta na tayo dun sa susunod. Okay, tapos na tayo sa real properties. Feeling ko na overload ko dun, so uinom ko muna ng tubig. Next is, list of residential units with a monthly rental per unit not exceeding 15,000 pesos regardless of the amount of aggregate rentals received by the lessor during the year. Also, if the rent per unit exceeds 15,000 pesos but the aggregate rents for the year do not exceed 3 million pesos, it is not subject to FAT. Ito lang yung sinasabi dyan. Kapag ka daw ikaw ay nagpaparenta ng residential units. Tandaan mo, 
residential units, hindi commercial units. Okay? Kapag daw, okay, kapag daw, yung monthly rental per unit mo does not exceed 15,000 pesos. Hindi lalagpas ng 15K kada buwan. Kahit na lahat ng units mo pag pinagsama-sama, okay, ay lalagpas ng 3 milyon. Hindi yan subject to that. Maganda yan. Diba? Maganda yan. Why? Kasi dati po, ito, ayong 15K kasi, is under ng train law. Now, so, before train law, yung 15K na yan, mas mababa yung value yan. Dati po, ang 15K na yan is 12,800. No? Dati yung threshold is 12,800 par prior to train law. Pero, after the train law, yung 12,800 naging 15,000. Okay, kaya yung mga nagbabayad ng renta dyan, renta ng residential units, as long as hindi lalagpas ng 15,000 yung monthly rental nyo sa unit nyo hindi yan papatungan ng bad okay tapos sinasabi rin dito if the rent per unit exceeds 15,000 but the aggregate rents for the year do not exceed 3 million it is not subject to bad halimbawa naman sumobra na sa 15k yung renta per month dun sa unit na nirerentahan nyo okay hindi agad basta basta kayo pwede singili ng bad bakit? dahil dapat daw yung lahat ng units na pinaparentahan o nagpaparent sa inyo pag pinagsama-sama yun dapat lalagpas din ng 3 milyon so halimbawa nag, meron kang nirerentahan o kami nagpaparent na dalawang units lang okay sabi natin dalawang units 50,000 per month 50,000 per month tapos dalawang units yun 100,000 per month times 12 mo how total kikitain niya lang is 1.2 million so kahit na ang laki 50,000 nung kanyang monthly rent hindi mo siya papatungan ng but dahil in aggregate hindi pa rin lalagpas ng 3 million so anong key take away natin dito dapat 15k more than 15k per month and greater than 3m per year Okay, ulitin natin. Ayusin natin. Dapat, greater than 3 million per year. Yung aggregate, yung summation ng all units. Okay, kapag ka nasatisfy lang itong dalawang ito, this must be both satisfied. Sabi natin, and, hindi or, saka lang siya magiging subject to that. Again, dapat, greater than 15k per month ang rent, ang rent per unit and yung aggregate rent for the year for all the units must exceed 3 million pesos para mag subject to but if isa lang ang namit okay pag or yan isa lang ang namit exempt siya okay okay Next, sale, importation, printing, or publication of books and any newspaper, magazine, review, or bulletin which appears at regular intervals, which fixed price for subscription and sale, and which is not devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisements. Ang keyword natin para dito is appears at regular intervals. Okay? And not devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisement. So, pag bumili tayo ng libro, tignan natin kung may iba't yun. Pero ako, bumibili ako lagi sa book sale kasi doon pinakamura. O karamihan ng libro ko, doon ko nabibili. And mura nga doon kasi walang VAT. Next, transport of passengers by international carriers. Uh, reminder lang, no? We have already discussed several carriers, domestic or international, by air, by land, or by sea. Lagi mong i-take note yung mga natututunan mo doon, lalo na if with regards to passengers or cargoes, kasi hindi lang siya subject to VAT, or hindi lang siya subject to, or hindi lang siya exempt sa VAT. Rather, meron din kasing, ano yan, percentage tax. So, baka mali ito ka. Kaya ngayon pa lang isulat mo na para magiging more specific tayo sa kung anong categorization ng transactions nila. 
Next, sale, importation, or lease of passenger or cargo vessels and aircraft, including engine, equipment, and spare parts thereof for domestic or international transport operations. Ito naman, no, uh, specific tayo dito, no? engine, equipment, and spare parts daw ng mga cargo vessels and aircrafts. Next, importation of fuel, goods, and supplies by persons engaged in international shipping or air transport operations, provided that the fuel, goods, and supplies shall be used for international shipping or air transport operations. Halimbawa, si Cathay Pacific, no? isang airline company, no? nag-import siya, importation, okay? nag-import siya ng ilang supplies niya galing sa bambansa. No? Sabi natin, UAE. No? Yung value na yon, yung goods na yon, supplies na yun, would not be subject to VAT. Okay? This is an exemption dun sa lahat ng importation ay subject to VAT. Services of bank non-bank financial intermediaries performing quasi-banking functions and other non-bank financial intermediaries sale or lease of goods and services to senior citizens and persons with disability as provided under RA 994-9994 Expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010 and 10754 and Act Expanding the Benefits and Privileges of Persons with Disability respectively same dun sa sinabi ko with regards dun sa mga cooperatives, kasama to dun sa mga additional laws na pag-aaralan ng mga accountancy students. Okay, yung mga benefits para sa mga senior citizens and PWDs. Next, importation of life-saving equipment, safety and rescue equipment and communication and navigational safety equipment, steel plates and other metal plates including marine grade aluminum plates, used for shipping transport operations provided that the exemptions shall be subject to the provisions of the Section 4 of RA 9295, the Domestic Shipping Development Act of 2004. Imports yan, ha? Next, importation. Importation ulit of capital equipment, machinery, spare parts, life-saving and navigational equipment, steel plates and other metal plates including marine grade aluminum plates to be used in construction, repair, renovation, or alteration of any merchant marine vessel operated or to be operated in the domestic trade. Next, transfer of property pursuant to Section 40 C2 of the Tax Code as amended. Next, association dues, membership fees, and other assessments and charges collected by homeowners associations and condominium corporations. So, self-explanatory. And lastly, sale of gold to BSP. Next, sale of or importation of prescription drugs and medicines for 1. Diabetes, high cholesterol, and hypertension beginning January 1, 2020. And uh, the other, cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis, and kidney diseases beginning January 1, 2023. And lastly, okay, lastly, ano to, ha, sale or lease of goods or properties or the performance of services other than the transactions mentioned in the preceding paragraphs, yung sinabi natin ganina, the gross annual sales and or receipts do not exceed the amount of 3 million pesos. Ayan. So, malino na, no? Na... Ang threshold nga kasi ng VAT, generally, above 3 million, and 3 million and below, tulad nung drawing natin ganina, 100,000, greater than 100,000 to 3 million is subject to percentage tax, which is, hindi na subject to VAT. Again, it is clear, no, base dun sa mga binasa natin na exempt transactions, which is under the section 109 of the NIRC as amended, no? malinaw, na merong mayroong VAT exemption dahil this is for humanitarian purposes. Okay, humanitarian purposes dahil do ang VAT nga is transfer doon sa mga, ay tax doon sa mga transfers, business trans transfers in the course of trade or business. No? It is deemed, okay, it is deemed and understood by the law na yung ilang transaction ay hindi na dapat pampatawan ng VAT dahil ito ay necessary, okay, necessary eh, for the subsistence, okay, necessary para mabuhay. Kaya, uh, meron tayo humanitarian reasons kung bakit merong mga VAT exempt transactions. 
So, yun lang yung essence nun. Ah. Yun lang yung essence ng bat exempt transactions. For humanitarian purposes, kaya merong bat exempt transactions. Now, alam na natin yung mga bat exempt transactions. Gusto ko lang i-categorize, okay, yung mga exempt transactions na nangyayari in reality. And I want to categorize this as una, non-bat entities, and the other one is by bat entities, na meron lang transactions na exempt. Yan. Dito sa nauna, non-bat entities. Kung maalala mo, sabi natin, yung less than 3M, hindi siya subject to VAT. Ibig sabihin, yung entity na yon inherently, it is not VAT registered. So, exempt siya. Yung entity mismo na yun, ha? hindi hindi lang yung transactions nila. Kasi, ano, it will carry over. As an exempt entity, na less than 3 million ng iyong sales, so, hindi siya subject to VAT. Kaya siya nagkakaroon ng exempt transactions. And ito, being an exempt entity, pag nagbenta siya, output, wala. Wala siyang output kasi hindi nga siya VAT registered. And at the same time, kung bumili siya sa VAT exempt, may input ba? Wala din. Diba? Wala rin input dahil yung binilan mo ay exempt entity din. So, lahat ng transactions nila is but exempt. Now, dito, madali lang sa part na to dahil exempt na siya inherently. ba Inherently. So, lahat ng transactions niya would not be subject to but. However, dito sa kabila tayo, magkakaroon ng concern, special concern. Sabi natin, meron daw mga but entities na nagkakaroon lang ng certain exempt transactions. Okay? So, incidental. Depende sa kanilang transaction. Pero generally, they are but registered. Okay? So, pag nagbenta siya, exempt. So, walang output. Wala, ah. Wala. XX. None. Dito rin, ah. None none. Hindi ko sinasabing zero ah. Sabi ko none, wala. No. Pabalik tayo dito. So pag nagbenta si VAT entity tapos exempt transaction 'yon. Walang VAT, 'di ba? Walang VAT. E paano? Paano kung yung binili niya may input? May input. No. Paano yung kung yung binili niya may input? Halimbawa, no? Uh, this, itong, ito ay isang drugstore no? tapos itong customer mo is senior senior so yung binili mo may input meron tapos itong transaction mo walang output okay walang output so ano mangyari yan sabi nga natin dito pumapasok ang application kasi unlike dun sa nasa kaliwa wala talaga in the first place sa pagbibili hangga sa pagbenta. Nito sa pagbili meron, sa pagbenta wala. In this case, ang input natin would be categorized as expense. Okay? So all corresponding input VAT ng mga VAT entities sa kanilang sale which are exempt transactions, hindi siya mako-consider as input credit rather an expense. Bali, generally, no? Generally, dalawang situations nagkakaroon ng exempt transactions. Una, kapag ka-inherently yung isang entity exempt sa VAT talaga. So, regardless kung ano man yung sale na yun or purchases na yun from VAT exempt institutions or entities, hindi siya subject to VAT. And the other one is, merong mga specific transactions yung mga VAT registered. Okay? Which is ito nga nasa kanan. Now, bigyan natin ng example, no? Bigyan tayo ng example. Mang Tonyo is a senior citizen who purchased his maintenance medicine for hypertension at a drug store. The total amount of the medicine is a 2240. No? So, ito. Si Mang Tonyo nagpunta siya dun sa isang drug store, tapos nagpunta siya dun sa counter, no? Sa counter siya bumili. Tapos nag-type yung yung pharmacist. 
Siyempre, tinatype yun, di ba? Makikita mo sa screen, maliit na screen yung presyo. Lumabas 2 to 40. Remember na yung lalabas doon, in, ano yun? But included na doon, no? Included of what na yun. But inclusive. Pati naman yung makikita natin ng mga prices doon sa mga ano, di ba? Sa mga estante. Okay, so yan, 2 to 40. And remember, Mang Tonyo is a senior citizen. Sabi nga natin kanina, what exempt yung sale sa kanya. Yan, so... Again, ito yung price. Okay? Sabi natin, kapag ka VAT exempt, okay, VAT exempt, tatanggalin natin yung VAT. Kasi dapat wala tayo papato na VAT. So, itong 2240, kunin natin yung VAT. Time is 12 over 112. 2240 time is 12 over 112. Kalalabasan is 240. Yan. So, yung VAT exempt price niya is 2,000. Pesos. 2 to 40 minus 2 40, Pero heads up na lang rin, no? heads up. Kasi sabi nga natin, pag-aaralan mo rin naman yung senior citizen and PWD, PWD loss, isama na rin natin dito. Lahat ng sales sa kanila is subject to discount. No? May 20% discount. Bali, itong 2,000 na ito, time is 20% pa yan. Which is 400 pesos. And yung 400 na yan, i-deduct pa natin doon sa VAT exempt price to arrive doon sa invoice price na ni Mang Tonyo, which is 1,600 pesos. Bali, ang babayaran ni Mang Tonyo is 1,600 pesos dahil nabawasan na yung VAT and nagkaroon siya ng discount. Reminder lang, lagi mo munang tatanggalin yung VAT bago mo bigyan ng discount. Okay, kaya dito, inuna muna natin tanggalin to bago ito. And another, ano lang, add-on lang rin. Nagbigay tayo ng discount dito, 20%. No? Nagbigay tayo ng discount. Sa senior citizens lo, tsaka sa PWD lo, binibigyan sila ng discount on certain, okay, certain goods or services na essential. Essential, hindi lahat, no? Hindi lahat. So, essential goods and services. And, however, meron kasing instances na yung bibili nila, meron ng discount, discounted price. Halimbawa, no, si Mang Tonyo pumunta sa isang supermarket, may naiti siyang product, 100 pesos. Tapos nakalagay, discounted, 75 pesos. Sabi ni Mang Tonyo, uy, 100 to 75. Less ko pa ng 20%, so 75 times 0.8. Si Senta na lang babayaran ko 60 pesos. Punta si Mang Tonyo sa counter. Akala niya 60 pesos lang babayaran niya. Pero sabi nung sabi nung cashier, ay hindi po 60, 75. Reklamo ni Mang Tonyo, bakit eh, may discount pa nga ako? Ganito kasi 'yon. Yung discount na mag apply doon ay para lang doon sa mga regularly priced items. Okay? Regularly priced items. Now, if ang isang regularly priced item is discounted already, tas bibili nyo na isang senior citizen, ang maa-avail ng senior citizen is whichever is lower dun sa discount ng isang regularly priced item, less 20% as senior citizen, or yung discount, discounted price from a regular price, be, eh, less yung discount mismo ng entity. Now, in this case, habi natin, 100 pesos yung item. Diba? 100 pesos. Kung si, siya ay senior citizen, 20% nun. So, ay, less 20 natin. O, less 20 kasi 20%. So, 80 as a senior citizen. Pero since, given na ng grocery na may 25 discount na, ito yung ma-claim ni Mang Tonyo. Hindi ito. And exclusive kasi, no? So, yung discount ng mga senior citizens and PWDs, hindi pwedeng on top of this pa. Hindi pwedeng on top. Daging mabibigay lang whichever is lower. Kaya, yung makukuha ni Mang Tonyo ay ito. And at the same time, no? Kung hindi ito, halimbawa, no? Halimbawa, yan. Nakita ni Mang Tonyo, 90 na lang. Akala niya, 90 times 0.8 pa, 72. Mali. Ang ibibigay sa kanya, ito. Kasi, dapat, exclusive lang, whichever is lower. Okay? So, addition lang yon Please remember na, 
yung discount na mga senior, senior citizen ng PWDs is exclusive doon sa discount na ibibigay ng mga entities. And yung pwede maklaim ay whichever is lower. Okay? Next example. Aling Bebang is an owner of a 6 apartment building in Quezon City. Being near a commercial district, her monthly rentals for the units 20,000 pesos per month. Now, sabi natin, may dalawa tayong criteria dito per month. Tapos yung aggregate niya is dapat greater than 3 million per year. Na compute natin. Dito, check tayo. Check tayo. Check tayo dito. Kasi 20k per month. Pero dito, tignan natin, ilang ba ang kanyang units? 6 Okay, 6 units. So, 20,000 times 6, 120k per month. And you 120 mo, times 12 mo pa. Okay? Times 12 mo. So, 120, 120 times 12, 1440. So, ang kanyang aggregate per year lang is 1,440,000. Hindi siya pasok dito. Therefore, si Aling Bebang is... But except pang kanya rin. Okay, but except to. Next, Afford the Homes is a property developer. The following properties have been sold. Una, residential lot to Mr. A, 1 million. Pangalawa, house and lot to Mr. B, 2.4 million. Pangatlo, to adjacent residential lot to Ms. C, 500k and 700k respectively. Sinabi natin adjacent, assume na natin na gagamitin ni Ms. C on her own as one. The amounts are the properties GSP. Now, identify natin kung alin ba dito yung mga vatable or hindi. Yan. So, yung benta kay Mr. A na residential lot, kung yun ay ginawa on or before December 31, 2020, but exempt siya. Remember na ang threshold natin dito is 1.5M at this time. Pero, starting January 1, 2021, May bat na yung benta kay Mr. A na residential lot. Kasi regardless of amount na. House and lot kay Mr. B. Kung binenta on or before December 31, 2020. But exempt po tayo dahil ang threshold natin dito is 2.5 million. Pero kung nabenta yon on or after January 1, 2021. Batable na po yun dahil ang ating threshold is 2 million na. Okay. And pangatlo. Adjacent residential lots, residential lots, lote lang, to me see, 500 and 700k. So, ang total nito is 1.2 million pesos. On or before December 31, 2020, it is VAT exempt. Why? Dahil, same dito sa nauna, 1.5 million po ang ating threshold. Pero pagdating po dito, sa on or after January 1, 2021, VATable na dahil wala nang set na threshold, any amount na. So, yan. Yan, we have three examples for this exempt transactions. Lagi lang natin tatandaan, okay, yung exhaustive list na yon, Exhaustive list kasi siya, yung 109. Basta, iisipin natin na, in essence, there are exempt transactions for humanitarian purposes para hindi masyado mabigatan yung mga mamamayan. Okay, for the next discussion, mapupunta na tayo doon sa pangatlo, na transaction which are zero rated transactions.